When the arteries cannot supply enough blood to the heart, doctors may recommend a procedure known as coronary artery bypass graft surgery, often performed when the patient's heart is still beating. In this episode of Health Digest, I take you to the operating room where doctors are performing a surgery on a 57-year-old patient who presented with up to four blockages. Come with me. This cardiothoracic theater is a beehive of activity. A team comprising of the lead cardiac surgeon and anesthesiologist alongside other critical cadre of healthcare professionals kick off a critical heart surgery that requires utmost precision in execution. Armed with the brief of the surgery of the day, they all get down to work, carrying out a procedure that to an ordinary person would be considered impossible. But like Sans would have it, this is yet another great stride made in cardiac surgeries. With their sharp scalpels alongside other surgical tools, they meticulously cut through the patient's body to get access to the small yet vital organ in the human body, the heart. The surgery kicks off at exactly 9.59 in the morning. A bypass surgery known as beating heart surgery or the coronary artery bypass graft surgery. What is striking about this type of procedure rather is the fact that the patient's heart won't be stopped during the entire process as always seen in some heart surgeries. Dr. Sunil Kumar Dube is steering this procedure. He is also the head of cardiothoracic surgery at Medihill Hospitals. The patient on the table came in with four blocked arteries that were affecting the supply of blood to some parts of her heart. In this patient also, if you see uh, what we have operated today, this patient was having, uh, this is the right, uh, the black, uh, the black uh, sketch is of patient's own blood supply, heart blood supply, coronary arteries. This is right coronary arteries. This is left main coronary, coronary artery dividing into LAD and circumflex artery. Okay. So, uh, see, here is 95 to 99 percent block here, 90 percent block here, some 80 to 90 percent block here, 90 percent block here. The right one is having 80 to 90 percent block here. So, because of this, the heart muscles, they are not getting blood supply. So, what we have done is we have taken a, a vessel from inside of the chest and we have attached it here. So, because of blockage, the blood was not going, so that will go through this. So, one we have attached here. So, this will carry blood from aorta to this part of the heart. Now, uh, we have taken a, a saphenous vein graft and we have attached to this these branches and attached it to the aorta. So, this will carry blood to this whole part of the heart. Then, right side. It, there was 80 to 90 percent blocked. So, we have put a vein graft from here to here. So, this hole will be supplied by this. In this procedure, Dr. Dube and his team aim to improve circulation to the affected heart muscles. To do this, they create a bypass. The grafted artery or vein bypasses the blocked parts of the coronary artery, carrying oxygen rich blood to the heart muscle. The grafts can be harvested from different parts of the person's body, either from the legs, chest or hand. God has given us double lane traffic where single lane traffic is needed. So everywhere he has given us ample amount of uh, circulation. So uh, in, uh, in the chest, uh, behind this uh, rib cage, there are vessel which is called internal memory artery. So one on the left side, one on the right side. These two are called internal memory arteries. Uh, IMA. So, it is one is left, Lima, one is right, e, Rima. So, Lima, Rima. Then uh, in the hand, we can take out radial artery. Uh, uh, with which we take out the radial artery, the other artery which is on the this side of the body, uh, hand, it supplies the upper limb. So, our hand is like uh, preserved. 
uh, in the leg also there is saphenous vein graft which we take a great saphenous vein which are, uh, starts from the foot and it goes up to the groin. So we can take this vessel and we can use as a graft during the bypass surgery. Uh, then our body has got uh, different other veins also in the upper limb as well as lower limb which uh, make up uh, for the loss and they supply the uh, affected area. So the doctors have successfully harvested healthy blood vessels from the patient's legs that will be grafted to the blocked coronary artery. At the same time, they've divided the chest bone going through the middle of the sternum to get access to the heart. The heart surgeon explains that the remaining blood vessels often make up for the harvested ones and supply blood to the affected areas through their tributaries. There are two types of coronary artery bypass surgery, also abbreviated as cabbage. The off-pump bypass surgery and the minimal invasive bypass surgery. The off-pump surgery is also known as the beating heart surgery, where the patient's circulatory system remains intact and is not connected to a cardiopulmonary bypass pump or heart-lung machine that performs the function of the heart and lungs. The success rate of beating heart surgery surpasses 90%, with only a risk of 2 to 3%. During this procedure, the heart is not stopped while the surgeons suture the grafts in place. Dr. Dubey gives it an upper hand in terms of preference by cardiologists when treating blocked heart artery. Doctors say stopping the patient's heart while performing a bypass surgery has its own demerits. A patient may only be connected to the heart-lung machine when their heartbeat is pumping too low. This can be due to a prolonged heart disease which makes the surgery a high-risk one. Most patients like the one Dr. Dubey and his team are operating on are eligible for beating heart surgery. However, if they have an underlying condition which is too actively involving the heart or just had a recent attack or those with an accumulation of calcium in the arteries are not eligible for the beating heart surgery. But rather, the surgery that requires their heart to be stopped and are connected to the heart-lung machine. Traditionally, we have been doing this kind of surgeries uh, by putting the heart, uh, taking the blood to a machine which is called heart-lung bypass machine, then stopping the heartbeat and then we operate these patients. Uh, but because this is an artificial machine, and uh, the function of heart and lung to be taken care by an uh, artificial machine. So there are certain disadvantage of that. So avoid uh, just example is in chances of infection, then uh, the inflammation can occur in the whole body. Uh, there may be bleeding, there may be risk of uh, paralysis also to a patient which is called stroke and some kidney problems in such kind of patients. So to avoid this, uh, gradually with the evolution of technique, now we are doing beating heart surgeries in which we do the same surgery but without the heart to stop the beating. With the beating heart surgery, there is less handling of the aorta, less chances of stroke, less bleeding and chances of infection. The duration of stay in the intensive care unit ICU and the ward is also shortened. The duration of the surgery is not pegged on the condition the patient presents with, but the surgery. Doctors say the human body is created in a way that where only one blood vessel would be required to perform a function, it is rewarded with an extra blood vessel in the same area, which is considered a bonus. Even if they are 50 or 60 percent blocked, the body adjusts. However, with time, the blockage increases and the person may experience pain or exhaustion, emotional disturbance when they are performing certain tasks like running or climbing a flight of stairs. Usually the patient come with a complaint of chest pain or breathlessness on exertion. As we walk, the heartbeat increases. The demand of the heart muscles increases, but because of blockages, the heart is not able to get proper blood supply. So when the person walks, climbs stairs, or even he is emotionally disturbed, so that time he starts having pain either in the center of the chest or ex like uh, it is radiating to the left shoulder or left upper limb. Sometimes it is in the jaws, sometimes in the neck and sometimes in the back. So there may be pain in the chest pain. There is dyspnea, breathlessness on exertion. 
some people, especially uh, there may be palpitation, what we call as uh, abnormal feeling, feeling of the heartbeat, whether it may become a bit uh, high or even sometimes low because of uh, heart attack. And some patients, uh, like especially in the diabetes, the pain sensation uh, which is taken, care, taken by the nerves to the brain, they are damaged in uh, what our language we call it as autonomic neuropathy. So in diabetes patients, uh, even 50 to 60 percent of these, they present with burning behind the sternum, just uh, uh, more of acidity kind of thing. Because they, their heart is not able to give the uh, brain signals of chest pain. So they have a uh, sort of burning sensation. These blockages are caused by two factors which may be modifiable or non-modifiable. The non-modifiable are factors beyond human control and they may include genetics, age and gender. There are certain modifiable factors also. Just like uh, if the, some, uh, somebody is not uh, having proper diet, diet rich in uh, high fa fatty food, uh, cholesterol level, uh, this has to be checked. Uh, diabetes has to be controlled, blood pressure needs to be controlled and sedentary uh, lifestyle has to be changed, they have to do regular exercises and uh, also um, uh, you can, uh, the person has to stop smoking. So these are all uh, the modifiable factors which we can, uh, which help in such kind of patients. On the other side of the hospital, some patients like Firoz Abdul Razak, a resident of Nairobi, was preparing to go home. The 46-year-old has been at the facility for the past 14 days, three among them having been spent in the intensive care unit after undergoing a beating heart surgery. Abdul Razak had up to five blockages in his coronary arteries. An early onset of stroke saw him rush to the hospital for further checkup when his symptoms could not be managed through the self-medication he had immersed himself in. His surgery took about seven hours. Wikio mbili iliopita, nikatoka kazini ilikuwa Tuesday, Wednesday. Before that, nikasikia kama mwili haini, haiko vizuri. Nalikuwa nikijilazimisha. Hile parasetu mo, likidogo kuna gears, nini. Sasa Wednesday night, kutoka kazi nikaingia. Asubuhi kwa mka last two weeks ago. Asubuhi samoja na nusu nikasikia nika kama hii kitu kina kufa ngazi. Nikasikia kitu kimekuwa maapa ndani. Siwezi kutauka. Nikamambia bibi yangu, this is, norm, this is not a normal thing. He attributes his health predicament to the soothing but little puffs of the cigarettes he smoked, only to realize that just like the first disappearing smoke from those cigarettes, he was slowly exhaling his health away. I'm a seven, 90% cigar. Sababu yo nicotine na block your veins. Kivuta inaingia direct. Niki calculate my years. I'm smoking since 30 years. Moja mbili, tatu, sigara ine, pia tano ya siku. The nicotine goes inside every day. Kama muna vuta, mujaribu kuwacha yu kitu. Badae ndio mutasikia, utamu yake na wa, life. His recovery back at home also comes with some instructions like not to put any load on your, on your chest and this I should wear around three months to recover my chest because if I cough I will feel a pain because they have done open surgery. Whatever I feel I'll just they have teached me how to do it. He will also have to use this incentive spirometer to exercise his lungs and make them stronger as he heals from the surgery.
after the surgery, they need to do uh, good physiotherapy because otherwise the lungs will not inflate properly. They will, uh, the, the, there is a space between the lungs and our rib cage. So if they are not doing proper physiotherapy, their lungs are not inflated. So in such patients, there may be collection inside and it may need again to be uh, drained out. Okay, their, their lung, if there is not inflated, there will be possibility of developing uh, lung infection or, or, or even pneumonia. Okay, so that is why a good physiotherapy is must, uh, what we call as incentive spirometry, which helps in uh, uh, like keeping the lungs also normal. Otherwise, if they develop lung infection, they develop cough, cold, and uh, this will cause further increase in the uh, chest pressure. And every time they will cough, this bone will move and they will have more pain. Okay. So for all these reasons, they need to do good, good amount of physiotherapy and spirometry of the chest physiotherapy. His counterpart, Stephen Rito, who also underwent the surgery, will also not be spending the night at the facility after successfully undergoing the beating heart surgery. Before the doctors nailed a diagnosis, he had been treated for other conditions since 2014. <laughs> The surgery seems to have resolved the migraines he would experience, he tells me. He regrets not being able to adjust his health-seeking behavior. I was able to Nasikia leo uko hivi kitu inaweza kuja usikie usungu mwingi na ukwisha hata unaweza enda kwa daktari kabla hujamuelezea bila ulikuwa unasikia unasikia hata ujui umueleze nini unatoka unaenda There are different tests that are conducted to help diagnose those blockages as explained by Dr. Dubé We do the ECG of the person we do echocardiography that is the sonography of the heart and if there is some problem in that then we have to go ahead with the angiography of the heart in which we put uh, some dye, radio opaque dye in the heart vessels and we make a uh, x-ray kind of film, continuous film, in which we see if there are blockages. If these blockages are at uh, one or two points where we can put stents from inside, then our dear cardiologist friends, they do angioplasty. That is, they put a small stent or spring from inside the blood vessel and they open it there. But if these vessels are diffusely diseased, that blockages are at uh, certain points where this angioplasty is not possible, then we go ahead with the bypass surgery. Okay. So um, after the surgery is over, we close or, or approximate this uh, bone with the help of steel wires. Okay. So we uh, and we tighten it. So the so the fracture is there, but we with the help of steel wires, it is now. Uh, near each other, approximated. For this fracture to heal, it takes time, at least six to eight weeks. For that time, then we, uh, we cannot put a plaster here. If somebody is having fracture in the upper limb or the lower limb, we put a POP cast, what is, what is called plaster cast. Okay? But in a chest, we cannot put a plaster cast. A person has to breathe. So we apply a chest binder or a sternal binder uh, and it, it is uh, tightly put so that this bone does not move every time. Okay, so uh, it helps in keeping this thing together and uh, uh, avoid, uh, it avoids movement of the sternum. Too much of pain is avoided because it keeps them uh, together. We, we explain to the patients that after the surgery, they have to be uh, for two or three days, they will be in the ICU, uh, another two or three days, they will be in the wards. So routine things, what we will be doing uh, before the surgery, we will give them anesthesia or anesthetist friend, they give them anesthesia so that they uh, sleep. In the, in the deep sleep, they will not have any pain uh, uh, like uh, 
they will not be afraid, there will not be psychological stress. So then we do the surgery and uh, after the surgery when they are in the ICU, we see everything is fine, then we make them conscious again. We give them medicine so they become conscious. And uh, usually after, after the surgery is over, after two to four hours, we remove this ventilator machine. Patient is fully conscious and they can talk to their families. And uh, usually it, uh, uh, it is nearly three to four hours post-operative, but in some patients, they may need, uh, need ventilator support for overnight period also. Cardiovascular diseases are on the rise globally and experts are calling for urgent action to help stop and reverse the steep rise in heart failure happening across the Middle East and Africa. <laughs> A group of experts from the region explained that the average age a person will develop heart failure in the two regions is 53 and 56 years respectively. Unmet needs in awareness, prevention and diagnosis of heart failures have been highlighted as major barriers to prevention of heart failure in the region. Everybody is having too much stress in their life. So all these things, uh, they are eating junk food. Okay. Uh, the, the, the tummy is more, but their uh, limbs, they are thin, which is called uh, pot-bellied people. You can see them uh, uh, more than uh, what we used to see previously. Okay, so these all things which have to be avoided. Stress is a very bad thing. Uh, even stress can cause brain hemorrhages, stress can cause increase in the heart rate, increase in the blood pressure, stress can cause uh, even uh, uh, blockages uh, which are already there in the heart vessels. Uh, it can cause unstabilization of the plaques and uh, acute onset of heart attack also in some patients. So anxiety and stress, they are very bad factors. They cause a release of cert certain hormones which are not good for our body. So these, uh, that's why all these things need to be avoided. Uh, you see, the message behind is prevention is always better than cure. So if we can, uh, if somebody is having already having a genetic predisposition, if their father, mother and brother, sister, they are already having heart diseases, it is better to take certain precautions. Uh, do not eat junk food, smoking, uh, avoid smoking, take care of, uh, of your uh, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, avoid sedentary life, right? So uh, avoid junk food. So these things, they will keep the persons happy and healthy. So if it is uh, possible, prevention is better. To reduce this burden, policy makers have also been challenged to prioritize heart failure and its associated comorbidities, train health workers in early detection of high-risk patients, improve access to advanced diagnostics, among other recommendations. Gloria Milimu, KTN News.